Republican Congresswoman Kat Kamek of Florida, member of the Energy Committee and the Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, is in focus now. Uh, Congresswoman, what is your initial reaction to this? Mm. Harris, it's outrage. You know, before they were sacrificing children's education and their safety in New York City at the behest of these illegals, they were pushing our homeless veterans out to make room for these illegals that have been shipped in, bussed in. But you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And as a sanctuary city, New York has made their bed. They now have to contend with the fact that they have between 750 to 1,500 illegals coming to their city every single day. Not only that, but 65% of the illegals that they are housing and taking care of are on the public dole. That means their food, their housing, their health care, and beyond. And it is all mm. at the expense of our kids and our veterans. So this is, this is really starting to hit close to home for so many people. And if there is not a consequence for these illegals coming in, it'll just continue. Well, I just remember when he was running, uh, Mayor Adams in New York City yeah. had wanted there to be some voting allowances for people who were not citizens. So I, I don't know how shocked everybody can be that now that the sanctuary city is an actual sanctuary, uh, that he wouldn't welcome it. But I guess we should be shocked. I don't know. Well, and that's the thing. When you look at last Congress, H.R. 1, the For the Politicians Act, that was Nancy Pelosi's signature piece of legislation that would have not only nationalized our elections, but would have allowed non-citizens to vote. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take a genius to, to put two and two together here, where you have non-citizens being allowed to vote, and then you have an open border. It seems to me that the left will do anything to win an election, even at the expense of national security, wow. certainly at the expense of our kids. And as I said, we've seen homeless veterans getting booted out of hotels and, and facilities to make way for these illegals that have that been That was yesterday. Yes. That was just yesterday. And today is public school kids in New York at yes. seven different locations. I mean, it's been quite a week. Uh, all right. Members of Chicago's black community rallied Friday and went after city leaders for opening up police stations and other abandoned schools to house illegal immigrants. Watch. Mm -hmm. Our specific frustration lies in the continuous and blatant disregard for the safety and overall quality of life of black residents. A couple of my participants, that's what we call them, we don't call them defendants, they are homeless. When I went about inquiring about some housing, one of my participants reached me on my phone after I was in Clay, Mr. Carrington. Uh, I did get placed on the wait list, but I was told that the immigrants were taking priority. All right, let me get this straight. <laughs> So now we can add to U.S. military veterans displaced for illegal immigrants. Public school children put in a way that is unsafe for them, so parents are taking them out of school. They're displaced by illegal immigrants. And now black residents are concerned about the homeless in Chicago being displaced by illegal residents. This is just wild, Harris, and I'm so glad that you mentioned what's happening. In New York, they are actually using one of the former training academies for the NYPD to house these folks, but it gets better. They still have an active range where they do target practice that is in use that is also housing illegals. Do, does anyone see a problem with this? I mean, this is absurd. I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills when I'm reading these stories and hearing from our Border Patrol agents, who, by the way, are exhausted. Yeah. I got a text from one today and said there have to be consequences if we're going to stem the flow. We can't maintain this. We're exhausted and we're terrified for our families. We can't do our jobs. Help us, please. Congresswoman, uh, forgive me. I'm going to interject here because I want to I want to fact check now. Are they yeah. still at the border working that seven day rotation? No time off. Yes, yes, and, and I'm telling you right now, in California and in Arizona, those sectors are getting hit the hardest. Um, I think Texas, the state of Texas, has stepped up as much as they possibly can to give reinforcements through Texas DPS, but in Arizona and California, they are struggling and they are terrified mm. for their communities and they are overworked, underpaid, and unappreciated. I, I am deeply concerned about the fact that we have seen not only a Pakistani individual, a foreign national on the international terrorist watch list, who was apprehended, but also in California, an Afghan national on the terrorist watch list that was apprehended. You know, as well as anyone, how many hundreds of thousands of gotaways are now in our country that have criminal pasts and intentions. This is scary stuff. I have told Border Patrol leadership on this very program in the last few days how much we pray for them, we are with yes. them. But you know what they need? They need some rest. 
Because yes. if they're going to catch terrorists, I mean, can you imagine how critical that job is to all of us, our sovereignty at stake here? We've got to make sure that they feel whole and appreciated. Yes. Congresswoman, thank you always for being in focus. Thank you, Harris.